Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about numerical functions. So numerical functions are rules that produce exactly one output of the dependent variable for each input of the independent variable. All right, so this uh, is follows straight from what we said about functions in general. Now we're just going to talk about numerical functions, meaning functions with numbers. Okay. So what if we have uh, this function, y is equal to x squared, and let's say that x is our independent variable, that's going to be our input, and y is our dependent variable, variable, that's going to be our output. So let's put x over here and y over here, and let's decide if this is a function or not. Um, so the domain of x would be all numbers, but we're just going to do a few examples here. So if we put zero in for x, then, then we get zero to the second power, which is just zero. So if x is zero, then y is zero. If x is one, then one to the second power, means one times one is one, so y would be one. If x is two, then we get two to the second power. So y is equal to two to the second power. Two to the second power means two times two, which is four. So y is equal to four. If we put three in here for x, then y is equal to three to the second power, which, which means three times three, which is nine. Okay, and we could keep going on, but hopefully you get the idea here. For every input that we put in here for x, we're only going to get one output for y. So when we take x and square it, so we multiply it by itself, we're only going to get one number out each time, okay? So this would be a function. What about this? So assuming again that x is our independent variable, so x is our input and y is our output, would this be a function here? Do we get exactly one output for each input that we put in here? So let's see here. So what if I were to put zero in here for X? And you know what? I'm going to actually write this one on the side and work it out step by step. So if I put zero in for X, then what I'm saying is Y to the second power is equal to zero. So can I think of a number for y such that if I were to multiply that number with itself, if I were to square that number, I would get zero. And yeah, we can think of a number like that. You can maybe pause the video for, for a bit and try to think of that number. That number would be zero. Okay, so if we put zero in here for y, and zero squared is equal to zero. So zero for y makes this a true statement, makes both, both sides the same. So, so far, so good. What if I, and I don't actually have to go in order here. Here I want zero, one, two, three. I don't have to do that. Um, what if I were to pick the number, let's say uh, 49 for x. So that means that I'm going to, well, I didn't have to erase the arrow. Okay, so that means I'm going to plug 49 in for x into this original equation. So then I'm asking myself, is there a number for y such that that number to the second power is equal to 49? And if you think for a second, you can pause the video, should be able to come up with, well, yeah, there is a number like that, seven. Okay, if we put seven in here for y, then we have seven to the second power is equal to 49, which of course is a true statement because seven to the second power means seven times seven and seven times seven is 49. So we get 49 equals 49, which is good. So yes, seven could be an output for an input of 49 over here. So it, it looks like I'm getting just one output for every one input. So does that make this a function? Well, if what I said was true, then yes, except what I said is not true. 
we're not actually getting only one output for every input because if we think a little bit harder about this, then you might realize there's actually another number which we can put in here for y and get, and if we square that number, we get 49. Can you think of what it is? Pause the video. What other number other than seven can we multiply with itself and also get 49? Well, the answer is negative seven. If we take negative seven and multiply it with itself, negative seven times negative seven is equal to positive 49. So I would get 49 on the left, and I still have 49 on the right. So both sides would be equal to each other. So set negative seven is another valid output for this input. So, okay, so if my machine is, like I was saying in the other video, you can think of it like a machine. If I spit 49 into X into the as my input for the machine, then the machine will churn it up. And if the machine is smart, then it'll spit out actually two outputs, positive seven and negative seven. But we don't want two outputs. We only want exactly one output for each input. So this would actually not be, I'm saying X here meaning as opposed to a check mark, X meaning this is not a good function. Okay, so it's not a function. All right, so something else that I wanted to talk about in this video is just a little bit of note, whoops, just a little bit of notation here. So numerical functions often use the notation f of x, which stands for a function of x. And to, f well, before I read this next sentence, it looks here like f and x are getting multiplied together. So if you're familiar with using parentheses to represent multiplication, then it might look to you here like f and x are getting multiplied, but that's not what this means. This means that we have some function and we call it f, is very often called f, but it could be called something else. And x is the input that we put into the, the function f, okay? And how would we spit out an output there? So let's give some other examples over here. Oops. All right, so, so to find the output, just replace all the x's with what's in the parentheses. And of course, they don't have to be x's actually. So I'll do another example where I just use different letters. I use h for the letter representing the function and d is the input. But uh, let's start with this one over here where I have f, the function is f and x is the input that I put into that function. So what does that mean? That simply means that I'm just going to replace all of these x's with whatever number I want to put in. So if I were to come up with another table, another input output table like I did before, and I would have X over here, and I would have F of X over here. And now what if I wanted to evaluate this function at three? So I would write that as F of three, so that meaning the function evaluated at three would be equal to, and now I'm just going to replace all the X's with what's in parentheses. So I put the three in parentheses here. So I'm just going to replace all the, I only have one X over here. I'm going to replace that X with three. So I have seven minus three times three because I'm replacing the X also with three. Okay, and then over two. And then I just evaluate this side. So F of three, the function evaluated at three is equal to three times three is nine. So I get seven minus nine over two. Okay, seven minus nine is negative two. So I get negative two in the numerator, positive two still in the de denominator. So, so this function evaluated at three would be negative one. Okay, so when X is, what did we say? When X is three, then f of x is negative one. All right, let's do another example. 
what if I wanted to evaluate this function at negative four? So I would say f of negative, the function evaluated at negative four is equal to seven minus three times negative four over two. Okay, and so three times, uh, follow my order of operations here. So I'm going to do multiplication before I do subtraction. Three times negative four is negative 12. So I would have seven minus negative 12 over two. Sometimes if you don't want to keep copying this, you can just write equals and, you know, just if you're feeling lazy, you don't have to copy this uh, to every line. So I'm feeling lazy here, so I'm not going to keep copying this. So seven minus negative 12 is like seven plus 12, which is... Okay, some technical difficulties there. So seven minus negative 12 is the same as seven plus 12, which is 19. So, <clears throat> so let me just write 19 and then still over two and then 19 divided by two. Let's see, well, 18 divided by two would be nine. So 19 divided by two would be nine and a half or 9.5. So when X is negative four, F of X is 9.5, okay? I don't always have to use the letter F and I don't always have to use the letter X over here as the input. We could have, we could say that the function is H and the input is D. And then we can make another function table here. I'll put H over, uh, sorry, I'll put D over here and I'll put H of D over here. And then let's just evaluate some uh, random points here. Um, I don't know, how, what about uh, five? So I, if I evaluate this at five, so I have h of five, or the function h evaluated at five is equal to, and then I'm just going to replace all of these d's with fives. So that would give me five times four plus five, okay, because I have a d here and I have a d here, so I have a five here and a five here. And so I have equals five times nine, because four plus five is nine, and that's going to give me 45. Five times nine is 45. Okay, here I am actually using these parentheses to represent uh, multiplication between the five and the nine. Okay, so you just have to understand that that the parentheses symbols get used differently in, in different contexts. Okay, so you just have to understand it based on, just like when you're reading something and um, a word might mean something different in a different context. Here you just have to understand that the parentheses mean that D is the, uh, is the input variable, which we're plugging into the function H, okay? And uh, let's just do uh, one more quick example. Um, what if we wanted to put a, I don't know, how about a negative two in here? So here I have D, so my D is negative two now, and then in parentheses four plus D, so that would be four plus negative two, so that's going to give me negative two times, and then four plus negative two is the same as four minus two, which is two. And then I have negative two times positive two is negative four. So if my input is negative two for D, then my output for H of D would be negative four. Okay, so this last part of the video was not about determining whether something was a function or not. I just wanted to show you this kind of notation where we have something that looks like it's multiplication, but actually it means that f is a function of x. And by the way, f is used a lot um, to stand for a function because f is the first letter in the word function. So you'll see functions written as f uh, very often, but it could also be h or q or anything, it doesn't matter. Um, and something else which I realized that I've been saying in the video, things like f of three and h of five, which really I shouldn't be saying. When we say f of x, that's correct to say. So you can say f of x, which means that the function f is a function of the variable x. So x is the variable that we plug in to the function f. Um, but if I were just to give a particular number, f is not generally a function of 
the number 3 or the number 5, f is a function of x, or here h is a function of d, and x might take on the number 3, or d might take on the number 5. Um, so it would be better if you're talking about a specific number to say f evaluated at 3, or h evaluated at 5, and so on, rather than h of 5. So anyway, um, that's it. Have a great day.